Hi everyone, thank you for joining me on Tuesday Talks. My name is Michelle Jewsbury. If this is your first time joining us, Tuesday Talks is designed to open up the conversation about domestic violence and all of the subcategories of domestic violence. I was a survivor, I am a survivor, I was a victim of domestic violence for three consecutive years with one year after that being emotionally, psychologically, and financially abusive. The first three years were emotional, financial, sexual, and physical. Um, today's topic is going to be the NFL and domestic violence. This is specifically geared towards people in the United States. These statistics that I'm going to be reading from are from USA Today and from NFL Online. So I'm going to dive right in. Um, if, you might, if you don't know, uh, the biggest day in NFL history is the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl for victims of domestic violence is called the Day of Dread. And it's... It's been that way for many, many years now. And the reason being is men oftentimes watch the Super Bowl and testosterone is, is, is going through their veins and lots of alcohol is being consumed. And if their team wins or if their team doesn't win, there's excitement, anger, rage, all sorts of emotions happening within this man who's watching the Super Bowl. And oftentimes, that rage, that anger, that testosterone is then brought upon their loved ones, their spouse, their girlfriend, um, oftentimes even their children. And the Day of Dread is the biggest day for victims of domestic violence being that it is the not most important day but the 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 largest day that assault happens to them um, there are more domestic violence reports on the day of dread super bowl than any other day throughout the year uh, i I'm talking about the NFL specifically because of recent news here in the United States. Um, Ezekiel Elliott from the Dallas Cowboys was recently suspended for six games because of alleged domestic violence accusations. What happened is, I'm going to be reading a lot so I get the statistics correct, but he was accused of domestic violence in July of 2016. Uh, he supposedly, he was accused of being physical with his girlfriend five times between July 17th and July 22nd. What was so interesting to me is that he was never charged. That there were, there were no charges that, that were placed against him. And what the NFL did is suspend him for six games if he's actually going to be suspended for six games. So his repercussion is that he can't play football for six games. Um, I know that the players get paid a certain amount. I'm not sure how that works, but I know that if you're suspended for a bit, then you don't get your full pay. So he's having financial repercussions and he's having player repercussions. Is that enough? Is that enough for what happened to this girl, this woman? Supposedly, he assaulted her and she was bloodied. And when he was asked about her, he denied that they were in an exclusive dating relationship. He said that they were just sexual partners. So he devalued her in, her, in his statements and he's getting away, in my opinion, with domestic violence. But this is not the first time that this has happened. So according to USA Today, there have been over 12 accusations of domestic violence within the NFL. So excuse if I, if I don't pronounce these names correctly, but Tremaine Brock uh, was accused of felony domestic violence in April of 2017, and it was dropped. Uh, Will Parks 
was arrested and accused of harassment and non-physical domestic violence. And that was in March 2017, and they're working on a resolution right now. Ethan Westbrooks was arrested uh, for domestic violence, suspected domestic violence, and it was dropped, and that was in March 2017. Dan Skuka, uh, he was accused of push, pushing a woman's face with an open hand after she refused to give him her phone number. That was dropped. That was in June 2016. Johnny Manziel, uh, Justin Cox, Josh Brown, I can keep going and keep going. What's so interesting to me is most of these men were either suspended for one game. The biggest one that, that I, I read was with Josh Brown. He was accused of fourth degree domestic violence with his wife, who later obtained a protective order, and he was suspended for one game. And I think he still plays to this day, I'm not sure, but he was just suspended for one game. Um, he was arrested and the charges were dropped. So because you have money and because you have power, does that mean that you should be able to bend the rules, bend the laws, that you should be able to assault people when you want to? No, no, of course not. Um, the fact that these charges were dropped means that these men put tons of money into this to make it disappear, to make it go away. What's interesting to me is my former abuser, we're gonna call him Paul, he, he is a very wealthy individual up north and he was accused of domestic violence on a few different times besides just me and he had put a lot of money into his lawyers, into his attorneys, into the law, and he was able to get off. I'm not sure about the current situation with what's going on with him right now, um, but in the past, he was able to break free and the charges ended up being dropped. A lot of it, one of the times, had to do with me when I was still involved in that relationship with him, and I believed his lies, believed his sorries and his I love you's and and really believed that he was going to change so I dropped the charges twice um, in in that relationship and when you're involved in a domestic violence relationship you really believe that you love that person and you really really believe that that person is going to change because they tell you that they're going to change and and they wake up and they look at your bloodied face and your black and blue eyes and and they cry and you have sympathy for them as a victim you have sympathy for your abuser so that that's what happened to me and that's what happens to a lot of victims involved in domestic violence is that they they believe what their abusers tell them um, what's interesting, another fact about me is I had talked about the Day of Dread, the Super Bowl Sunday, for a lot of victims. Uh, my abuser and I didn't go to a football game, but we did end up going to a lot of baseball games. And he and I were both Dodgers fans. So we went to a Dodgers game one time, and it was a playoff game. I don't remember who they were playing. Uh, this was a few years back now. And that was a day of dread for me because we won, but he wanted to continue celebrating. So he wanted to go back to the VIP lounge and drink some more. And so I listened to him and I went with him to the VIP lounge to drink some more. And I closed out our bar tab because I wanted to leave. I was ready to go and the car was there to pick us up. He got so angry with me, yelled at me in the bar, grabbed my arm, the bartender actually leaned forward and said, Miss, are you all right? He said, she's fine, before I could even say anything, and started to drag me outside with force, grabbing, gripping my arm. Luckily, I was able to break free from him, and I ran and ran and hid behind cars in the parking lot because I I knew from previous attacks what he could have done to me. So be careful at sporting events and be careful 
in general with with men who have a lot of testosterone going on within them um, who are are amped for a game or a fight I know there's a huge boxing match coming up as well Mayweather um, and uh, I'm sorry I don't know the other guy uh, but but I know that those days are very very dangerous for victims and I want you to be aware um, people ordinary people just watching the games please pay attention to what's happening around you please pay attention to women and men who may look like that they're being abused yelled at screamed at spit on pushed punched pulled please open your eyes and open your ears and stand up and do something and help these victims um, i would like to leave everybody with a bible verse uh, from Colossians 3:19, and it says husbands love your wives and do not be harsh with them that includes women love your husbands do not be harsh with them and if you are in a dating relationship there's mutuality right there it's it's not unequally yoked and please be kind to one another all right thank you very much for joining me and please join us next week on Tuesday talks